Now that we have understood what adapter viewer is, let's take a look at recycler viewer. As I mentioned, it's a different type of list which recycles the same elements again. However, we don't need to use on data in this case. To basically work with recycler viewer, we need to add an additional package called as espresso-contrib. And you can see this in the example that we'll see in just a short while. So when it comes to scrolling, you have multiple methods at hand. You have scroll to, scroll to a holder or a specific position. Similarly, if you want to perform an action, you have action on item. If you want to perform an action on the holder item, then you can use that. Or if you want to just perform an action at a given position, we have an option for that as well. Let's take a look at the simple application. So I have a basic recycler viewer sample, which has just a list of elements. And as you can see in the screenshot, we have a frame layout as a child of this recycler viewer. And each of them has a simple text view with a text like this is an element number and we dynamically generate more numbers. So what if we wanted to automate this? So this is how a simple test looks like wherein we are trying to see whether a given element is not present in the list. So let's understand this in a bit more detail. So we want to perform a scroll action. So we make use of recycler view actions and the scroll to method. And then we check whether this particular recycler view has a descendant with a specific text or not. In this case, we are giving a text which is definitely not going to be present, so this test should fail. Of course, since this test fails, we will annotate this test with expected perform exception dot class to make sure that this is an actual negative test that doesn't that fails for no reason and raises a false alarm. Now, since we want to scroll to a fixed position and perform an action, we will use a similar syntax wherein we will use recycler view actions and we'll say, hey, we want to perform an action at a given item which is there at a specific position. The first argument is an actual item that we want to perform an action on and the second is the actual action which is click in this particular case. Once we do the click, we just verify whether the label up top is updated with an expected value. So hey, we say this is the element and we expect a specific number to be present that we clicked on. And then we just use a simple on view with text to find that specific element and then check that it is displayed. So let's just take a look at this example quickly. So for this, we are going to launch the recycler view sample. And I'll let Gradle quickly sync and build this application. This is the main benefit of a watch party, right? I get to play God and I can just skip and fast forward through the boring parts so that you can just see the interesting parts. All right, so let's launch our application under test. And as you can see, this is our sample application. I can keep on scrolling. Notice there is a specific position in the middle that says this is the middle. This is interesting. We have a test for this. But as you scroll within this list, Android is going to recycle the components in a much more effective manner. We have the main activity here, which has all the logic to configure this. Now let's take a look at our test. So again, to start with, we annotate our class with JUnit4. And this is the first test that I just described in a while, wherein we try to find the recycler view with on view and then we try to perform recycler view action trying to scroll to a descendant which is definitely not going to be present and I annotate it with this uh, expected exception. I can try to run this test and the test passed. As you can see it only took a second to launch the application and perform this simple test. Next, we actually want to try to scroll to the expect, expected element. So we have the on view where when we find the recycler view, we use recycler view actions and try to perform an action. So here I'm trying to say I want to take a look at the 40th element and I pass that 
I also say that I want to click on it. And once I have clicked on it, I want to make sure that the text at top matches. So let me just run this test quickly. And it runs again. Now, I notice I mentioned the specific text. This is the middle in the between. Let's say I want to actually verify that Recycler view has this specific element. For that, we use the scroll to holder. And I want to make sure that I am able to basically find this element. So I give a custom matcher which says, hey, can you find me an element which is in the middle? If you take a look at this custom matcher, we have our own type safe matcher, which has the type custom adapter dot view holder. This provides an implementation of our own matcher, wherein we say this specific matcher should have this text. And finally, we have we override the matches safety method, which takes a view holder as an argument and then calls the get is in the middle method. You might be wondering where this method actually lies. This method is something that we need to implement in the application under test. So this is the actual part where a developer or you is going to go in and modify the view holder a bit just to make sure that you add some support for testing. Wherein in this case, it's like we use a Boolean field to try to see, hey, if if I have a row or a text view with a certain text, then set this Boolean to true. And the same Boolean is something that I verify in outside. So this is just a small example of how you can build some testability into your app and how Espresso facilitates these type of use cases. They could obviously work for more complex use cases as well.